What's up, y'all? What's up? So, I didn't realize. So, I made an email when I made this page that was attached to this page. Um, I didn't realize how many people actually been reaching out to me. I didn't realize that. First, I want to apologize for me being late. That's number one. So shout out to everybody that that been waiting on me. So I did not realize how many people that have been reaching out to me. Ever since I done dropped these prison stories, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I try to make these these prison stories entertaining, but a lot of them, man, y'all have no idea. I opened up this email, and um, some of them emails, I can't even repeat, man. It's real people out here that's going through things. There's people out here that has been violated in prison and I know it seems like that you know people just want to talk about like uh, booty bandits and stuff well I'm here to tell y'all right now um, we're going to talk about that we're, we're going to talk about that because there's a lot when I say a lot there's a lot of people that have been violated and before we even do that, I'm not even going to tell, I'm, I'm not going to bring up nobody names. I'm not going to bring up no city, no states, because that's not what we're here for. What I am going to bring up is the stories that was told to me. Okay. So I want everybody, I want everybody to just chill and let's get to it. Now, for my personal, I'm going to give y'all my personal experiences, okay? Number one, when you go to prison or the county, but we're going to say prison because you're there for the long term. Oops. If you will not hang out with somebody on the streets like me, I'm not a gang member. I don't gang bang. I don't run with hoodlums. I don't run with hot-headed people, okay? I like to I like to be around people that's calm and collected, right? I don't like to be around people that just always ready to go. Okay? So, while locked up, I'm not going to be hanging around or involving myself around people that is hot-headed and just always on 10. We don't mix. Okay? So when you get it where when you get it where you find yourself locked up and you got guys that's coming around you that you know you wouldn't hang out with on the streets, nine times out of ten, don't hang with them because they gonna put you in a predicament, a real crazy predicament that's either gonna cost you your life, cause you your manhood, or cause you more time. Right? Oh, we gonna cover it all, y'all. We definitely gonna cover it, it all today. The first thing we gonna cover is tricking you out of your time. Okay. Let's say you were well, number one. Never let nobody know how much time you actually got. Now, if you a lifer, or you got twenty plus years, then that don't even really matter. But if you go in there and you got about a year, four years, five years. Keep your mouth closed. Keep your mouth closed. Because there's going to be guys in there, right? That just got a chip on their shoulder. Knowing that they never coming home. And they get off. Hear me, y'all. They get off. Of knowing they done trip somebody time up. Oh, this dude only got two years? Okay. All right. I'm going to put that blade in his locker. And then let the, let the police know... That he got that thing in his locker. Now he got a five-year charge. Yeah. I'm telling y'all right now. Ain't nobody 
in prison your friend. Ain't nobody in prison your friend. I'm going to say it again. You don't have friends in prison. Yes, you might get dudes in there that might be cool. You might got dudes in there that's easy to talk to. You know what I'm saying? That you can sell with real good. But understand, everybody goes through things. A, a friend is nothing but a potential enemy while locked up. And on the streets. A friend ain't nothing but a potential enemy. All right? So, again, don't be your, go, don't be in there telling cats all your business. Don't be so friendly with dudes. I know a story where this dude, right, this dude executed this other dude brother, okay? When he got to prison, I don't know how, um, the counselors, um, the warden, administration, I don't know how they didn't catch this. But, hey, as fate will have it, you would think that they would send this dude to a different prison. But they didn't. Not only did they didn't send him to another prison, they put him on the same block in the same exact cell with this dude. Dude knew who he was, right? The, the, the slain brother, the slain brother of the brother knew who dude was. And they put him in the cell with him. So over time... He was feeding them. Yeah, he was feeding them. Working out with them. All that. Got them real comfortable. And well, one night, dude was asleep at the bottom bunk. Let me show y'all something. No, I ain't even gonna show y'all. Dude got a pencil. A number two pencil. All right? He put that bad boy by the dude ear, you know, a number two pencil, sharpen at the tip. And you know what he did? He put that boy right there by his ear and popped that boy in there. Bow! He ain't wake up. Pull that pencil out with the red liquid on it. Went back to bed. I'm telling y'all, man. Before we even get to that, man, number one, don't commit crimes, man. Crime do not pay. Crime do, I'm going to say that again. Crime does not pay at all. The only thing, prison, and prison is not fun. I don't know why some people, when I be telling these stories, I get emails talking about you make prison sound like a circus, like it's just fun, entertaining. It's not entertainment. Is there's no entertainment. How is it entertaining when you got anxiety? Every dang near moment of your life while you went there, you worried about if somebody gonna try to take you out. You worried about if somebody plotting on you. It's a lot of backstabbing. It's a lot of dudes in there that they handshake, right? Ain't matching they smile. I'm going to say that again for you old timers, for you old convicts. Y'all know what I mean. Your handshake, right? It's not matching your smile. You get anxiety. You miss your family. For you straight dudes out there that love women, it's over. You miss your kids. Some of you cats that lost your mama, your daddy, your grandma. People that you love and cherish, but let's look at the let's look at a more crazy part, right? Now y'all know I expose all the evils, right? So here you go in prison. You in your sixth year, you got a daughter. You got a daughter. When you went in, she was one years old. Now she's seven years old, and you get a letter. You get a letter from your baby mama. And she's telling you that your daughter is laid up in the hospital because her boyfriend, her boyfriend violated her. He went all the way with her. And what can you do? Nothing. But punch them cement, punch the walls. Crash out and go to the hole. So you can't protect your family. 
You can't protect your daughters, your babies, while you locked up. Here you go, maxing out the weight, the weight bench, pushing 400 pounds, all steel, raw muscle. And none of that mean nothing when you can't protect your loved ones. Telling y'all, it's not a game. It's not a game. Now you even got it where, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I need everybody to type one in the comment section because I don't know if I'm still live. I don't know if it's glitches. Type one in the comment section if y'all can hear me good. All right. I want to shout out to Cali Girl ninety eight. I want to shout out Mickey Scorpio three one three. I want to shout out Daryl Hudson. Right. I want to shout out Mel Lad Damo Rowe. I want to shout out Marie Benjamin. I want to shout out Face Shows by Spank, Antoine Day, Art Allen, Michael Neal, Beverly Johnson, Life with Cynthia, Liz and Mommy Cooking, Consuela. Right? Shout out to everybody in the comment section. And especially everybody that's hitting that like button. Now let's get to the booty band stories. Let's get to the let's get to the manhood stories. When you get a guy, again, if you know dang well you would not hang out with this man on the streets, nine times out of no ten times out of ten, you should not hang out with him in prison. Everybody in prison wants something. It might be food. It might be letters. It might be intimacy. Everybody wants something. Believe that. Ain't nobody going out their way to do anything for you. And don't want nothing back in return. It might even be drugs. It ain't always got to be no gay stuff. But here's the thing. I think the most traumatizing thing that a man, and we talking about prison, okay? I know this, this could go for a woman too, but we, we, keep it in the, we keeping this in the prison. I think one of the most traumatizing things that could ever happen to a man that's that's a straight man, heterosexual man, that does it, that doesn't indulge, don't even look at another man, for him to go into prison and get turned out against his will. I think that's probably one of the worst things that can really mess a man that might can break and snap a man. My, I remember seeing them dudes. They look straight one day. Then the next day, they got their shirt rolled up, like tied up right there. Walking different. Sticking their lips out. Got the Kool-Aid or the they. Got the Skittles making um, makeup on their eyes, the eyelids. <sighs> See, here's another thing that, that they don't talk about. 
here's another thing that they don't talk about. I don't know if I can really say this word, but um, it's basically when you decide to take your own life and it start with an S and it got I in it, right? See, some of these dudes that, that be getting turned out, they commit that. I remember with this one guy, man, he got turned out. He couldn't deal with the pressures. He couldn't deal... This dude got violated every day. Every day. By this group of dudes. It was for bloods. And let me tell y'all something about these gangs. They are... they. There is gay gangs in these prisons. Just because somebody is a gang member, a gang banger, all jails, all prisons got different politics where they do allow homosexuality. And some of these gangs do run in packs like wolves. Wolves run in packs. So you do got booty banded wolves that's in gangs. And just so happily, it was these five bloods, gang members. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if they went to a level four or five, that they, they would have got violated themselves. But, hey, it is what it is. And they was violating this white guy every day. Every day. And they, they, they philosophy is, well, I ain't the one, we ain't the one that's receiving it. We giving it. It's a power thing. We taking this, we, it's, it's a power trip. No, you dudes is just gay. And that's just what it is. That's just what it is. There's nothing about having power. There's nothing about sodomizing another man that should give you some type of power. No, you just a sexual deviant. A demonic sexual deviant. We're going to stop playing these military mind games, y'all, and just call this stuff for what it is. You are a sexual, demonic, deviant, devil, perverted, broken-minded demon. You ain't justifying that. People say, oh, well, Dante, you did two years. You ain't never involved yourself in no punk. No. I ain't put my business out. But this is what I used. I jackhammered. It is what it is. For you people out there like, oh, he nasty. All right, go get locked up. You go do a year. Matter of fact, you go do two a month. Put that white sheet up. Let your celly know, yo, I need I need a I need some time up here alone. Alright, I got you. See that's that that's that convict code. I need some time in the cell alone. And I ain't put my business out there, but I'm just saying. It's dudes, and don't get it twisted, y'all. There's dudes that done did 10, 20, 30, and lifers that, that never involved themselves in homosexuality. Okay, so we ain't going to put that jacket on everybody. It's just men in there that just straight, that, that straight up. They're straight up. You can't tell a man how to program and to keep it keep it funky with you. A lot of these dudes, never mind, I ain't even going to go there. I ain't even going to go there. Never mind. But I'm just saying, man, um, the military mind games that are played. Let's slide over here to the guard. Now, I'm not saying every guard is evil. I'm not saying that every guard is racist. I'm not saying every guard is a, homo, a homicidal maniac. But there is a big handful of them. I'm going to say one out of ten. One out of ten. Oh, y'all thought I said one out of ten is crappy. No. The one out of ten is good and fair. The one out of ten is good and fair. I don't know what they be now on the flip side, right? You do got inmates that do belong there. You do got inmates that are um, animals, period. Animals. 
their conscience, their mind has been seared. Okay? They done, they done gave themselves over to an animalistic mind. But the problem is, you know, these guards ain't got time to sort out the good people from the bad. You know, you know what I'm saying? So I, I get it. Now, now that I'm free, I get it. But when I was locked up, I just now, y'all, have I just now have made peace with myself of wanting to do something real bad to this one CEO. They say the word hate is is strong. It's this one CEO, y'all. I hated him. I hated him bad. That I told myself if I ever call him out out here, I don't care if we at church. I don't care if I'm at the gas station. If 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 we at the grocery store, I'm gonna tell my tell my girl, hey, go take the kids and y'all go home. I'm about to do. I'm. I, I got. I got to get. I got to get my payback. I got to get me. I got to get mine. I got to get my lick back. Right. I'll tell you how this guard used to do me, especially on the lockdown when I used to go to the hole. He would get he get my tray right, put it right there on the slot with the shoe, and push it in there. Then my food would go everywhere in the cell. So. I didn't eat for two days, but on that third day, I don't care what y'all say. You say, well, I want to eat that stuff off the floor. On that second day, midday, when they conveniently skip, skip to feed me, your boy Dante was eating toilet tissue. I got some tissue, put water on it, and had to eat it because they didn't feed me. I didn't eat the food from yesterday because my breakfast, lunch, and dinner got pushed in there on the floor. And what could I do about it? Complain? Drop a kite? Oh. <laughs> Here's the funny thing. Write a grievance? Who do you think going to get the grievance? Imagine this. I'm sitting in there. Boom. Throw my tray in there on the floor. I need a grievance. All right, here you go. Matter of fact, I'm going to help you write your grievance. Officer who did what? All right, I'm going to put this in the suggestion box. Y'all better wake up. Prison ain't, it ain't no games. It ain't no fun. You know, this is what this dude used to do. Just throw my food in there. Boom. But he only worked the weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I knew Friday, Saturday, and Sunday... Dante wasn't going to eat, so I had to conserve my food Monday through Thursday. I had to conserve my food because I knew there was a big chance that I wasn't going to eat Friday, well, Friday evening to Sunday night. I had to eat tissue. 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 I don't think y'all know what hunger is. I don't think y'all know what hunger, some people do, when you come from poverty, growing up poor. Some people do know what going to bed hungry is, but you really can't sleep, tossing and turning. When I was locked up in prison, y'all, it, it really wasn't that hard to adapt. I mean, prior to that, I was living in squalor, poverty, being poor. So it really wasn't that much of an adjustment. It was just I had somebody yelling at me, telling me what to do all the time. Ugh, but here's the thing, y'all. Um, A lot of youth... This go for poor whites, poor blacks, poor Latinos, poor whatever race of people out there. When you grow up in these conditions, you have no guidance. You ha you don't you don't know. When somebody say, "What do you see yourself in five years?" You don't even know where you can see yourself in in, in the next hour or two. You don't know what's coming your way. Especially when you living in these real... Listen, let me tell y'all something. I think I was... 
I don't know. Because I grew up in foster care from the ages of... I'm getting older now, so I might, I might mess it up. I remember I lost my tooth, my bottom tooth down here in foster care. I want to say I was maybe five. I just turned five, I believe. Four. No, I wasn't four. I was... F dang. I think I was f five or six. I, I'm a... Just to be safe, I'm going to say five, okay? I remember. Mm, I told y'all this story before. I remember my first foster home lady. Me and my sister went there. I don't know what this woman had against me. I don't know. It was a black lady. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a name out there too. Hopefully we can narrow it down. Her name was Miss Deborah. She stayed in Georgia. I want to say, I'm not even I'm not even really sure um, where at. It was just so long ago. But I know it was outside of Atlanta because we stay in Atlanta. And um, she had this big old rock roller, man. This big, vicious rock roller that they kept in the basement. This woman would feed me jelly sandwiches. The straight up jelly. That's where my teeth cricket. You see that? That's why my teeth is crooked. This woman would just feed me jelly sandwiches. I hate jelly sandwiches. Hate it. I said jelly sandwiches. My fault, y'all. Strawberry. <laughs> I keep saying jelly sandwiches. <laughs> no, strawberry. I cannot eat strawberry jelly. I cannot eat it. I like grape jelly. Apple jelly, peach jelly, that's cool. But strawberry jelly, uh -uh, I can't. Because it's, it's a certain taste that, that done developed in my mouth when I taste that. It just bring back trauma, bring back that remembrance, right? This is why I tell you, sometimes trauma, and I know this is a sidebar, sometimes when you get violated like that as a kid, right, hopefully that'll stop you as an adult from violating a child like that. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, quiet, quiet as it's kept. There's people out here that's abusing kids. It ain't always got to be sexually or physically. I'm talking about neglectfully. Giving the bare minimum. Mm. What I'm saying is, y'all, this woman used to whip my ASS for whatever God reason I don't even remember. I wasn't no bad kid. I was quiet. Because all I really wanted to do was go back home to my mama. That's really it. This woman used to beat me. Throw me downstairs in my drawers, right? Throw me. I didn't say. Now, this it was four stairs. One, two, three, four. Or maybe it was three. One, two, three. It wasn't two. Um, it wasn't a whole flight of stairs. We were like one, two, three, like a, you know what I'm saying? But she had beat my, you know what, and throw me down them stairs, right? And I couldn't roll, because if I would have rolled, um, nine times out of ten, that big rock roller would have did me greasy. And I remember it, it was dark and gloomy down there in that basement. And that rock roller would just, hurt, hurt, hurt. Like, this is, this is my face. And this is the rock roller about right here. Har, 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 har. And all I would do is just do just like this. And remember, I don't got no clothes on. I'm going to sit here in my drawers, in my Power Rangers drawers. Just hold my face like this, right? But then I done got so used to it. I done got so used to it, I didn't even cry no more. I didn't even cover my face. But the dog never stopped, right? And then when the social worker would come, She'll go get me ice cream. Don't tell what happened. Don't tell what happened. Or, or you ain't never going to get to go home playing military mind games. If you want McDonald's treating me, she knew She knew what to do. She knew what to do. Manipulating me. Giving me McDonald's, ice cream, all that when we go see the social worker. See, as I got older, I realized, you know, the government pay that bread. For you to be a emergency, um, what is that card? Thank you, restless no more. I appreciate you. Nah, 
don't be sorry for me, uh, restless no more. Nah, we we. I'm gonna tell you. I, I'm gonna let y'all lead on just a little bit on my life, just a little bit. All right. I worked where I I've worked, not still work, but I worked with the juvenile justice system for this reason right here. Right. I done worked with from the ages of five years old to 20 years old, okay, of kids being awarded to the system, um, from kids from five years old to lockdown facilities from five to 11, and then they transition out of there and go from 12 years old to 18 years old as teenagers to these group homes throughout the city or some lockdown facilities, and then from 18 to 20 for the adults that just haven't got it right yet that been in the system. I worked doing that for three years, y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all, you got to work with people, period, right? That's, I, I, I hated this. I, Y'all, I'm not a violent man, and I'm not going to admit anything that I have done. But if you work with the elderly, or people that got mental problems, and and I see you, cause I, I I know I know I worked in these places. I I'm, I was the one that ran my mouth. I'm telling. I I when I see it, I I let it be known immediately that this ain't what's going on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let y'all know this. I'm not a violent man, but I'm going to tell y'all. It was this girl. I'm not going to call her a woman. It was a girl. She was only there for the paycheck. There was this patient. Oh, there was this patient. He wasn't verbal. His body was like kind of twisted. He couldn't, he was immobile. He was in a wheelchair. He had to get his food par paraded, par paraded, paraded, baths, all that. He could not do nothing for himself. Y'all take this however y'all want to take it. But I'm going to say this is a lie, what I'm about to tell y'all. All this right here is a lie that's coming out my mouth. This woman, I heard him groaning, like making a muffled noise. So I'm like, that's unusual. So I something that's told me, Dante, go go in there and see what's going on. This is another disclaimer, y'all. This is a lie, what I'm telling y'all. I go in the bathroom, right? Because they had him on like this, Hoy, Hoyer lift. It was a Hoyer lift. Well, you lift somebody up. He was on his Hoyer lift, right? That water was scorching fucking hot. This bitch was sitting up there spraying him with the hot, scolding ass water. Ooh, ooh. What can he do? What the fuck could he do about it? What could he do? When she was doing this, she didn't even see me come in. I put my hand right there to, fit, to, to make sure I wasn't tripping. I put my hand like boom over there and it burnt me. I said, I said, Bitch, what the fuck wrong with you? And I'm not going to say what happened after that. But I ended up going to jail for domestic violence, but the charges got dropped. This was another reason why your boy ended up locked up. But what I'm trying to tell you all is this, and I don't even like sharing that story because right now I'm getting goosebumps, y'all. Because now that, that just really just opened up something that I don't even want to talk about. But I'm telling y'all. And I told y'all, I, 
I'm, oh, I told y'all I'm against men putting hands on women, but sometimes, sometimes, it it, it don't even matter. But here's the thing: when you go into these fields of working with disabled people, and you working with people that cannot fend for themselves, and they count on you to feed them, change them, lead them, take care of their medications. I done seen some evils and some of these people wonder why their lives so effed up. I'm sorry, y'all. I said I was going to stop cussing, but some of this stuff, God forgive me. Some of these people are so messed up. It's like why you know what type of you know what type of people that you're working with, and then you violate them like that. You violate them like that. This woman, y'all listen. I need for y'all to pay attention. When Dante went in that bathroom, right? He was right there. She was right there with the sprinkler. And the shower head right there. And I, I just wrapped my arm around her and felt the water. And I hurry up and pulled back. And lost it. You went here torturing this man. How about we put you, how about we paralyze you from the neck down? Put you on the Hoyer lift. Gold and hot, y'all. I'm a brown skinned dude, right? When I pulled back, y'all, and later on when I was in the county, I looked at my arm. I'm a brown skinned dude, and my and my arm in the spots was reddish. And she hitting him with it. I tell you all these prison stories. I forgot all about these stories. These are horror stories. Real life horror. H O Michael Myers, Freddy Cougar ain't got nothing on these. Horror stories. It's so easy to get into these group homes, these CNA jobs, taking care of the elderly because they so understaffed. If that ain't in you to take care of these people, man, go work at McDonald's, man. Go work at Walmart. Go work at a gas station or some go leave these people alone, man. Understand you could have a child that's disabled. You could have a child. And a lot of these women got kids too. That's the part that really Oh, this is the part that's really that's really Imagine, I'm a, and it ain't nothing wrong with working at McDonald's. It ain't nothing wrong working at fast food. Or y'all gotta understand, man. On this internet, the internet would tell you if you a man, you need to be making six figures. You need to be driving a Hellcat, a Lamborghini. You you need to be living in a big house, and all this right, all this foolishness. There's only one percent of men that live like that. One percent of men that really live like that. For you women out there that be talking about, oh, I want me a, I want me a six figure rich nigga, right? All that. That's only 1% of the population that live like that. You got to... I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Y'all better wake up and understand that this internet is fake. It's not real. This internet is not real. Let me tell y'all something. 
and this is I don't say this in no disrespect at all to any Instagram model. Because I, I get it. If you can get up there and shake your butt and make a living, making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, or whatever the case is, go ahead. Okay? I, I'm not condoning it because I'm a biblical, spiritual, um, Jesus, God, God-fearing man. I'm not promoting that. But what I'm saying is this. I dated a couple of these Instagram models, if that's what you want to call them. And it ain't what it's all cracked up to be. Because when that camera go off, and the self-esteem is... Hmm. Everything that glitters ain't gold. A lot of these women have issues, mental issues. And this ain't this ain't no shot at shout shot at no women because I love women, period. But y'all gotta understand, man, this internet is not real, man. It's not real. This is only for entertainment. Entertainment. It's only for entertainment. To get away from the real world. When you turn on YouTube, Instagram, and you see that girl with the big butt twerking and all that, y'all got to understand what happens when that camera goes off. Like she don't have to put the baby to sleep, have to get a baby melatonin so it can be quiet so she can make that money. Oh, y'all think I'm about to just crap on the Instagram model because she gave the baby melatonin? She didn't have to do that if the baby daddy didn't just hit and then abandon her with this child. Or he said, oh, she done saved up her money working at Walmart and she was going to get rid of the baby. And I don't condone that neither. Because like I said, I'm a Jesus, biblical, Bible, scripture dude. So I'm against that. But hey, that's just my opinion. But she done, she working at Walmart when she met this clown, this bozo, that all he seen was a fat booty that he wanted to hit. And he was handsome on the eyes. And he, could, he looked good talking, that talked to her too. She ended up sleeping with him. He digged her out for about three, four days. She ended up pregnant. But what she did not know, he was a bum A ninja. And well, she done saved up her money to get that abortion right and the bum ninja that he is after he dug her out she went to sleep he stole he stole it he stole the um abortion money now she was forced to carry this baby and now she on instagram right shaking her shaking their thing that her mama gave her telling y'all it's always, always two sides. Two sides. <sighs> Here's the thing. Everybody in the comment section, everybody that's listening, we only got one life. And I don't know about y'all, but for the from the ages of what 18 to I'm I'm just gonna say I'm 35 now. My birthday in about five more days. But from the ages of 18 to I don't know. I don't get a judge maybe about all together maybe about six years of my life. In and out, in and out, due to no guidance, due to ignorance, me being ignorant, me being a real ninja. Mm. This is crazy, madness. Y'all, we got one life. Um, if you involved in any criminal activity. 
you never know when your when when your number gonna get called, man. You don't know who that might be wearing a wire. You don't know who that's in bed with the police. You don't know who recording your phone conversations. Everything you say is being recorded and being delivered. You think your man that got two or three, oh, he can't be a snitch because he got two or three bodies. And I know this personally. He got two or three bodies. He had knocked everything down. He spent the block. So I know he ain't a snitch. And that's the one that's telling everything. Why do you think he keep getting out? How do you think every time he go to jail, he get right back out? Oh, because he a killer. Right. He too. All right. You right. Y'all got it. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So, what I'm trying to tell y'all. Get out the streets. The streets. The streets been dead. The streets was never what y'all. What. Y'all, we got to stop being so ignorant. People got to wake up, man. When you get them handcuffs put on you, sometimes they make it a little too tight. When, when, the, when, when the cop open that door, right, and they put your hand, they put they, they put their hand on, on the back of your head to make sure you you don't hit your head right there. They, you, you go in there. I still remember, man. Me being in the back of the damn patrol car, right? All uncomfortable. Man, these handcuffs tight. God dang. You can't even sit straight up. You got to go to the side like this. and kind of, you know what I'm saying? You got to kind of go to your side while you in that. Ugh. I'm telling y'all, man. Life ain't a game. We only got one life. Yesterday, y'all, I want y'all to follow me. Yesterday, I was 16 years old. I went to bed. Now, I woke up. Now, I'm 34 years old. And then when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to be 42 years old. And then when I wake up again, God willing, I'm going to be 60-something years old. Right? Right? We can't get back time. None of us cannot get back time at all. So y'all better stop committing crimes. If you, it ain't, it's, get out. Especially if you got the money. Get out. You doing all that slanging and banging. All that drug dealing, right? Making 10, 20, 30,000 a day. Well, ain't no drug dealers making that. I'm sorry. Making 500, and maybe you might get a couple of good plays in that week. You might get about two, three thousand dollars that week. It's a good week, though. Yeah. All that money. Well, let, let's say you make 10,000 a month. 10 times 12 is 120,000, right? You can become a truck driver. The first year, you ain't going to make too much nothing. You're going to make enough to survive and live. But that second and third and fourth year, oh, it's on, baby. You're going to get that. But it don't come with a, it don't come with, you got to watch your back. Making sure nobody trying to set just legal money. It ain't nothing, see, the world done got y'all fooled. Thinking that, oh, oh. It, you soft if you get a job. You soft if you ain't killing nobody and selling drugs. Well, let me tell you about what's being soft. I'd rather be soft, right? Because you tell me this. You telling me I'm soft, right? Because I'm not on the block. Pushing drugs. Destroying the community, right? So when I get locked up and my beautiful girl... Right? The girl that I sleep with every day, that, that, that always telling me, oh, Dante, don't leave. Don't leave the house. 
Uh, I'm, I'm finna go make this last play, baby. At 2 o'clock. And I told y'all the story. Let me give y'all another prison story. No. This is a county jail story. Let me give y'all a county jail story. Y'all type one in the comment section if y'all want a county jail story right quick. Type two if y'all don't. Let's see. Type one if y'all want a quick county jail story right quick. Let's let us let us see what we got. So, we all up in the bullpen, right? We in there just kicking it. Now, the bullpen, for the people that don't know, I don't know what the bullpen look like for other people. But, for the, the bullpen, for us, is where you go right at the intake. As soon as you get processed, you get you go straight to the bullpen. The bullpen is where you get you either you go there if you like in there on a DUI, you might go there to sober up. Um you go there if you about to do some time. It's just the first stop really. And everybody in there. Right? Unless you causing problems and they whip you out. And put you in a isolation tank. So, we all in the bullpen that's kicking it, right? I was in there for about um, maybe my second or third day. This dude come in there, right? That we knew from the hood, and we like, what? How you get up in here? So he telling us like, yeah, man, something told me, man. Something told me not to go. Like, what happened? You're like, man, I was just down to my last pack for that day, man. I done made all my money. I done made all my bread, man. I done sold my last pack for that day. So he said he'd go home, and he laid up with his girl. He said his homeboy, and I'm going to put his name out there. He said his homeboy named Double R, right? Yeah, double R from Columbus, Ohio. And I'm putting them on blast for a reason. Because I'm going to give y'all a double R story. But it's going to be, you know, a real jail story. But double R calls them. Bruh, I need you right now, bruh. Bruh, I need you. Man, I'm laying down, man. Nah, oh, man, bruh, I need that. I need a pack right now, man. I got these white boys over here, man. Come on, man. Hey, man, these white boys trying to spin. He like, man, bro, no, nah, man, I can't do it. He like, man, bro, man, I got these white boys over here, man. They trying to spin, man. Come on, man. They got 10 G's over here, man. He like, where? He like, yeah, man, they, man, just come on. Let me tell y'all something. This ain't got nothing to do with the drug game. But whenever something sounds too good to be true, So, he get in his car, well, he get his stash in his car, right? He got it where, with a horn that, he cut something out right there, and he got a compartment there, he put his stash in there. Only him at Double R knows this. So, he get in his car, he make a right, he make a whoop, whoop, that's the sound of the police. They run up on him with guns out. Get out. Get your black out. They lock him up, tow the car. They find that pack. They knew exactly where to go. 
Yeah, they grabbed that pack. So he in there with us, and he telling us a story like, man, it's just so crazy how like I like how, like Jay was just waiting on me to come, right? Something told me. So at this point in time, I'm like, hold up, did you say double R? He was like, yeah. I said, you talking about Rambo? He was like, yeah, yeah. How you know him? I said, dude, I've been in here for about three days now. Rambo been in here for about a month. He like, man, get out of here. No, I said, think it. I said, no. You talking about Rambo, right, with the cut under his eye? He was like, yeah. I said, dude, I just seen Rambo two days ago. He was like, man, there got to be somebody. I said, man, dude, I'm, we talking about the same dude. We talking about the same dude off of Cleveland Ave, right? Don't he be over there off of Cleveland Ave? Over there by the swap meet? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, dude, I'm telling you, this other dude popped up like, yeah, double R, he upstairs. <laughs> I promise y'all, I promise, no longer than, I'm going to say about a minute or two minutes, two detectives came up in there and was like, you, let's go right now. They pulled dude out of there. Let me tell y'all something. Mm. It's some guys that y'all think they're so thorough. It's some guys that y'all think that they're just so thuggish and so gangster and so solid. Y'all don't y'all don't know who y'all dealing with. This dude was getting dudes locked up while locked up. Getting dudes locked up while locked up. Some of these dudes facing, there's some cats out here, y'all, that can't even do five years. Can't do two years because they they so used to comforts, being so comfortable. When it's hot outside, they turn on the fan, cut on the air conditioner. When it's cold outside, they turn up the heat. When they hungry at night, they can get up and go to the refrigerator to get them something to eat or go to McDonald's to get them um, a McDouble large fry with a large high C with light ice. Some of these dudes sleeping in a good bed. Some of these dudes like to go to the strip club and trick off with the girls in there, right? So they don't want to be snatched away from that comfort. So I, 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 can't, do, I can't do no five years. I can't do it. I can't do a year, man. I can't do it. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to give y'all this person. I'm going to give y'all that person. And that, I, I just can't go to jail. I'm not going to jail, period. So they get to getting them. Yo, Mickey Scorpio said, they run their mouth and listen to rap music like it ain't nothing. But reality, they can't handle it. I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm a, I, I, and I'm going to be real. I don't do criminal activity. So I don't really care. And, and, and I have to say this. Because a part of all them emails that I be getting, they be show, how you feel about 6 9 how you feel, how you feel about 6 9 Takashi 6 9 I say, I don't care. Number one, I'm not a criminal anymore. I don't commit crimes anymore. Haven't committed crimes in years. I don't do no crimes with Takashi 6 9 He didn't tell on me. I don't care. It's none of my business. Like, I don't care if somebody just got knocked out down the street. It has nothing to do with me. I don't care. I'm not involved in it. So why should I care about what Takashi 6 9 is doing? They say, Dante, what is your stand so snitches? I don't care. Do you? Because a lot of these cats out here that be talking about, oh, <clears throat> a lot of these cats out here that be talking about, oh, yeah, he a snitch. I don't mess with rats. A lot of you niggas ne ain't even never been to jail before. Speaking on topics that you have no idea. You ain't never been in that hot seat. You ain't never been in that interrogation room. Right? 
They done put you in there for eight hours. And turned uh, for, for all my felons in the building, for all my criminals in the building, y'all know what time it is when they put you in there. And you ain't, sometimes they don't even handcuff you. They put you in that room and turn that heat all the way down and blast that air conditioning. Yeah, turn that air up, baby. Then it freeze you out. You'll be in there, put your hands, be in there like this, cold. Yeah, yeah, this, this was for my felons, for my criminals out there. A lot of cats ain't made that way. It, and it's not no badge of honor. It ain't no badge of honor. But the reason why some dudes can withstand that stuff because we was poor. You can't starve me out. I've been starved out since a child. I done slept on, on wood and floors as a child. Talk about this little mouse that's running around this room. I slept with the rats and the roaches. I give y'all the roaches growing up in boarding homes in Atlanta, Georgia, in the projects. When you got generation of, of roaches. Y'all remember the the, the um cereal corp, the Kellogg Smacks? But now y'all stop playing military mind games. Cause I know cause some of y'all grew up with the roaches. Quiet as it's kept, some of y'all still got roaches. Y'all know what I'm talking about, them Kellogg Smacks, that, them, that good cereal with the frog on the front. If you got roaches, you better not have that cereal in your house. If you got roaches, you better not have that cereal in your house. Y'all know what time it is? Uh, y'all know what time it is. How you gonna break it? Star me out. I'm used to not eating anyway. I'm used to living, and um, I'm list. I'm used to living being uncomfortable anyway. This ain't nothing but a walk in the park to me. It is what it is. But like I said, y'all, some of these dudes out here, they ain't never been through nothing, man. And it ain't like I said. It's not even about. Being no tough stuff, it ain't about none of that. Because if you really think about it, if a man and, and I'm saying it for myself, this and I and I, it takes discipline, it takes prayer, and it takes guidance, and it just takes a lot of patience. A real man, right? And I'm learning this. Do not automatically result to violence in a verbal altercation. It's easy to boil your fist up and strike a man in a verbal altercation. Okay? That should be violence. Violence should be the last resort. Violence should be the last resort. It shouldn't be no resort. If you can't agree, then let's agree to disagree and y'all go y'all separate ways. But put your hands on somebody. It shows lack of discipline. It shows lack of you just being a man. Period. And I'm learning that. Now somebody put your hand. If, they, if somebody put their hands like now, that's different. It is what it is. And I'm definitely not letting nobody get off on me first. Because you're not even going to get that close in front of me to get off. Because I got to get mine first. If I feel like, and that's why I said, I want to avoid all altercations, all issues. Especially with dudes that ain't never been locked up before. Because when these cats be talking, oh, I want to go back. No, you don't. Stop lying, man. You ain't trying to go back. You ain't. Come on, man. We not about to play these games. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to tell you all something. Oh, the double R story. So, yeah, double R was in there telling. While locked up. Walking his time down. Let's get back to the foster care. Because I wasn't done. 
I'm always getting sidetracked. So Miss Debbie, black lady, I remember exactly what she looked like too. To this day, I still remember what she looked like. She had played a military mind games, y'all. She had beat me, abused me, right? Put me in a basement with that big old monstrosity of a rock roller barking in my face. And then when we go see the caseworker, the, the social worker, the day before and that day, she'll give me ice cream, take me to the stove, buy me make notes. You know, manipulation. If you tell what happened, you ain't going to be able to go home. Right? Your mama going to be in trouble. So I didn't say nothing. And when the caseworker come asking me at the age of five or six, is everything okay? Is everything fine? Yeah, I love Miss Debbie. I love Miss Debbie. Mm. They say, Dante, how you get out that situation? I told y'all my sister was there too. My sister didn't get abused though. As far as I know. But my sister ended up telling. She ended up telling them one of them visits. And well, that was the end of Miss Debbie. I don't know what happened, but I know we ended up having to stay like at this. I want to, I want the police station. I, I, I don't know where it was at, but we ended up staying at this place. And um, it was other kids there. It was a lot of kids there, actually, to come think about it. And we was there for like two days. And then we went with this lady name is Holly. Now, she was a good woman. I love that woman. But here here goes something else. Here goes something else, y'all. Pay attention. Hold on. We still got people in here. Y'all type one if y'all want me to keep going. If y'all want me to end the live because I'm boring, y'all type two. If y'all want me to end the live, type two if, I'm, if I got y'all sleeping. If y'all want me to keep going, put a one in the comment section. Let's go. Let's see what's going on. Because I don't want to just be sitting up here running my mouth if y'all is falling asleep. Because that's what it seems like. I, I don't want to just be up here just running my mouth and y'all like, oh, won't he just get stopped talking? All right, well, I see y'all got it. So let's go. So you get it where, and what's up, King of 75 and Baron Evans and, and Sh Sh what that, Chandra? I'm not shouting out the people that I, that I didn't get to shout out earlier. Alan Christopher, Living Life. Okay, Living Life. Okay, here you go. So, now when I end up going to Miss Holly, Miss Holly had a 14-year-old daughter and a 17-year-old daughter. I told y'all this story before. See, Miss Holly, she was a good woman. Okay, she was a good woman. But I'm, I'm going to drop this bomb on y'all. Her 17-year-old daughter. And this is why I don't go so hard on the LGBTQ community. I'm going to tell y'all why. Her 17-year-old daughter. Now, remember, y'all, I was about five or six years old. I didn't know nothing about sex. I didn't know, I didn't know nothing about it. But her 17-year-old daughter used to take me to the garage, make me lay down, and she used to grope me. Hunching, is that what y'all call it? Right? But me and her, and I didn't know what was going on. I, the only thing I could think of, oh, she just giving me a hug, laying down. Not realizing what was going on. And then maybe after the second time, I liked it. The reason why I bring this up to y'all this is why I bring this up to y'all. And I'm going to keep it funky. I guess you can say I used to be homophobic, right? I just couldn't understand how a man like another man. When you got these women out here, I mean, that's the essence of a woman. It's just, mm, right? But then I thought about something, right? I said, wait a minute, Dante. What if this girl, this 17-year-old girl, was a boy, was a man that did that to you. 
could you have turned out different? Mm. I want y'all to hold that down for a minute. I want y'all to think about that. What if that girl, the 17 year old, right? That was violating me, right, as a child. What if that was a boy that was doing that? Because I'm gonna keep it funky with y'all. I think when she was doing that to me, that led me to be a hoe later on in life. Woman crazy, girl crazy. Now what if, if that was a dude that did that to me? Could have could Dante turned out gay? The world may never know. This is why I say y'all. I am a Bible man. I am a Jesus guy. I don't condone that lifestyle at all. But I get it. I understand. I get it. I understand. I don't know exactly what you're going through. But I, I wonder that sometimes. Like, yo, could I could have been like that? If it was a guy that did that to me? At this fragile age of five or six, twisting my mind up like that? Only God knows best. Only God knows best. So this is why, you know, as I got older, yeah, I had a problem with them type of people. But then as I got older, I got to really thinking, like, you know, some of these, some of these people, and remember, y'all, they people also, they are still human beings. But some of these people do not embrace that lifestyle. And some of these people really, really is battling with that. They might want to play these military mind games with this agenda out here. But the mass majority of them type of people that get out like that, they're not really with all this stuff to how they getting pushed out here like that. A lot of them people do want help. A lot of them people do know that there's something wrong. But when you got this, these other people just pushing that agenda saying it's okay to embrace it. They still know something wrong. Something's wrong. Something is wrong. I don't give a damn if it's that small. It's something in you that's still telling you that something's just not right. But yet, you give in and because the world is going that way. Saying it's okay. Then you say it's okay. But deep down, when you by yourself and the crowd ain't with you no more, and it's just you, your thoughts, that's why I say y'all pray for these people, man. Pray for these people. Don't don't shame them. I don't care how ridiculous and crazy they look of pushing that agenda. Y'all gotta pray for these people. If if you if you are a real Christian, you know, one of the commandments is that we're supposed to love our neighbors. That means we gotta love them too. That don't mean we gotta chill with them. That don't mean we gotta indulge in their activities. Hate the sin and not the person. Hate the sin, but do not hate the person. See, here's the thing. And yes, right, Cynthia, yes, this is a spiritual battle. But we ain't going to go biblical right now. We ain't going to do that today. This ain't what this is about. What, is, what it is really, I mean, ultimately, it is, actually, it is really about that. Ultimately, I guess it is. It's a battle of souls, right? It's the battle of mankind. The battle of mankind. King Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that's going on been happening. It ain't nothing new. What, because y'all got some new technology? Mankind, minds, and hearts is the same. 
you got the first murderer, Cain. This is why I tell y'all. This is why all you gang gang, right? All the gang gang. We bloods, we crips, genies, vice lords, all that. That black, 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 right? When you see me, I see you. It's black, 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 right? Understand, this is my brother. I know a, a real brother that came from the same mama and the same daddy. Brothers, right? And one brother killed the other brother over drug money. Black, 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 black. So just because we brothers, right? And we're not even brothers. We just gang affiliated brothers. Understand this, y'all. Please understand this. There's nothing new under the sun. Remember, Cain killed Abel. The first recorded murder. Cain was the brother of Abel. He killed his blood brother. So what do you... What do you think they... Y'all hear it all the time, man. There's no honor amongst thieves. And I ain't talking about a thief. I gotta understand, when you steal another man's property, when you steal another another person's dignity, when you rob, steal, rob a robber of life, there's no honor amongst thieves. We all know about crews. We all know about, we got family members that kill us. Kill us. Drug dealers. Women beaters. Beat them. Beat a bitch down like a man. We all got these people. Now, some of us are them things. Y'all better understand, man. We all are going to die. If you was fortunate enough, fortunate, that your mama didn't swallow you, right? Or you was a stain on a bed sheet? Or you ain't get aborted? I just gotta keep it real raw and funky. Or you didn't get aborted? And you is experience what we call life right now? The only thing that you was promised, it wasn't, oh, if you a woman that, oh, I'm a God going to give me a good man or you a man God going to give me a good woman you want to promise that you want to promise to have a good life you was promised trials and tribulations there's nowhere in the Bible that says that you was promised a good life stop listening to these dang preachers just telling you all that you're not promised a good life. You are promised trials and tribulations. The only thing you promise, again, if your mama didn't swallow you, put you out, your daddy splattered you on the floor, or didn't get aborted, the only thing that you was promised, if you was lucky enough to live, to live and experience what we call life, the only thing that you promise is death. That's it. It's the only thing you promise is death. None of this don't belong to us. My beautiful wife, my girlfriends, for you women, your husband, your kids, they are not yours. They belong to the creator. I'm going to tell you all, man, I thank God. I know that, I know this is finna sound crazy, but I'm not really even gonna go all the way in on what I'm about to tell y'all. But I thank God. If I did not get locked up this one particular time back in 2013, Dante might not been talking to y'all right now. Either I might have been in the grave right now, or I might could been doing life right now. 
depending on if I would have got off first. Depending on where I would have been at. Depending on where... Oh, man. Let me tell y'all something. You know, sometimes when y'all in a rush to go somewhere and you can't find your car keys or you can't find your wallet or something that's stopping you from getting in your car to go somewhere and you tearing up the whole house and you just can't... You know you put some car keys right there on the table, but you can't find them? Sometimes that might be God or angel that moved them because they know if you got in that car Hit a couple of blocks. That could have been a straight bullet with your name on it. Or some fool out here drinking and driving. And bow. Y'all better be careful. I'm telling y'all, I know, I know. A couple, oh man. I'm telling y'all, man. Y'all better start slowing down in life. Have y'all not noticed that it seems like time is just going by fast? This is why I told y'all yesterday I was 16 years old. I woke up now and I'm 34. And then I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to be 45. Y'all haven't noticed how time, it seems like it's just going so fast. Whether y'all believe it or not, demons, angels, God, the devil exist, whether you believe it or not. I'm not here to debate. I'm not here to debate nothing. But what I know of what I experienced supernaturally, and I wasn't in a state of drunkenness or highness or sleepiness, I don't know exactly what's on the other side, the size of the things that the scripture says. But Dante was, I, I done peeked behind the veil before. Under no influence of nothing. I know that there's another side to this thing that we call life. It's just, you can just peel it, if God reveal it to you, I was once an unbeliever. I mean, yeah. Who? How can you phantom that it's a it's a it's a guy, a, 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 this this being that created things, and there's a heaven, there's a hell, there's an afterlife. I actually thought that once you die, that's it. There's no more life. There's no more existence. That's it. It's period. It's eternal darkness. Eternal. This life. This universe. Poof. That's it. I used to only believe in God because the fear of hell that I don't want to burn. Hey, y'all better listen up. Don't y'all leave. Y'all got to get this work right now. Y'all got to get this work. Do not leave because y'all going to miss this. You get it where for the people in the comment section, please listen. For the people in the comment section, if you got kids, little kids, because you know our teenagers, when they get older, they got a mind on their own, and they and sometimes you want to do something bad to them. But go back to a time when your kids or your kid or somebody that loved you so dearly, and if you can't have kids, a cat, a dog, right? Somebody. Somebody loved you. Somebody loved you unconditionally, right? When they seen you coming, they embrace you. They love you. When you were when you will leave, they didn't want you to leave. They wanted you to stay. I should bust out and start singing on y'all. I should bust out and start singing on y'all, but I ain't gonna do it because y'all like to play games, and I don't want to leave y'all. I, I don't. I don't, I don't want y'all to be running out of the building, but y'all make me want to sing so bad. I know. I know. I know. So I'm not even going to do it. I, I promise to God I really want to do it, though. But I'm not. I'm not. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to let y'all decide. Type one in the comment section. It won't be long. It, it's just a quick verse. It's just a, it, it's quick. It just fit right into type one if y'all want me to sing. Type two if y'all don't. I promise it'll be quick. I promise it'll be quick. And y'all only can vote no. Dear Bellary, that's too many. Let's see. Let, let's see. It's a mixed bag. So, okay, y'all. I, I do it like this. Here we go. Here we go. So, I'm going to start over, okay? So, you got... <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I just got to lighten the mood because it, it got too dark. So, you got it where... Think of that person that you love so dearly that they couldn't... When they see you coming... They run to you, they embrace you, they love you. When when they see you, when you leaving, they come to you, they they don't want you to leave. Because all they want you to do is stay with me. Cause you're all I need. And this saying love is clear to see. Cause darling, stay with me. That wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad, was it? Right? Now y'all stop playing these military mind games. Uh, that was decent. Well, that, that was decent, wasn't it? Now cut it out. Now let's get back to it. No more singing for the night. But y'all know that's how I give it up. So now you got it where this is how God the creator, the almighty God, wants you to come to him. He don't want you, like I said. I only wanted to go to, I, I didn't want to, I only wanted to believe in God because I didn't want to burn forever. Right? And then as I got older and started having kids of my own and seeing how my son would come to me, he just loved me and hated when I left, he would cry. Right? That's how God want us. He don't want us. He's long-suffering. This is why when people say, Dante, where was God at when that child was being violated? Where was God at when that woman was getting beat and beat by that man? Where was God at when George Floyd got that knee on his neck? Do y'all not know what the scripture says? That our creator is long-suffering? Y'all don't think that he see these things and he hurt at his core? But he can't intervene because we got free will and this is why hell has enlarged itself that you can't even ma measure in it. It says that hell mouth has widened so wide that you can't even measure it. This is the hell fire is God's wrath. This is why you burn and burn forever. Do you, do you all not read and understand the scriptures? They say, but God allowed these things. He does allow these things to happen, but he's fully aware. And that's why there's called a judgment. This is why it's called a judgment. The judgment day. God is, y'all forget about when they say God is all love. He's long suffering also long suffering do you know what that mean for you women that's being abused by these men that y'all stay in these relationships for 5, 10, 20, 30 years with this abusive man because you are long suffering you know it ain't right but you deal with it let's just keep it funky let's just keep it real funky you stay with these nothing, these abusive men for all these years because you long suffering. This is what, and, and, and the people around you, they hurt because they know that they can't do nothing about it because after he whipped you out, you're going to go right back to him. Your mama, your daddies, whoever love you, they are long suffering because they see that their child is going through this, but they can't do nothing about it. And if they do something about it, you might end up picking that dude's side. 
Now, daddy, uncle, the brothers are doing life, or somebody might go to the grave. And it's not even the abuser. Yeah. So this is why I say God is long-suffering. You don't think he see this is why that this is this is why it's necessary for you to burn forever. There will be a judgment day. I'm I, I told y'all I didn't want to get spiritual. But it is what it is. Here's the thing. This is why people don't believe in God, because they do not understand the scriptures. The only way somebody can understand the scripture to, to keep it funky and real with you, God has to reveal that to you. There's a lot of false teachers out there, a lot of them, that are in the churches. A lot of people turn their back on God because they turned their back on a pastor. They church hurt. They see that the so-called men of God is acting scandalous, like acting like heathens. Pimps, liars, thieves, fornicating, sex, and all the single women in the church. So how can I follow God if if his representative is out here cutting up like that? It's not, God is not these pastors. God is not these priests that's out here violating. And I ain't saying all these men of God is violators. But for the people that are church hurt. That strayed away from God because of, of what another man or woman did. Yeah, living life, it is hard. It is. Confusion, deception, lies, trickery, abracadabra. Yo, some people say, Dante, you should be a pastor. You should be a teacher. No, no, and no. I don't, and I'm not. Why? Because the Holy Scripture says this also. People that teach these scriptures, we are going to be held at a different judgment. We're going to be judged way more stricter. We're going to be judged way different than the average person. This is why I try to stray away from teaching. Because I'm not in a predicament to teach. Yeah, I know the scriptures. And yeah, I do believe that God revealed a lot of things to me. But at the same time, y'all, I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility. Because I know on Judgment Day, I know. I know the word, and I know that I'm going to be held accountable. And I don't want to let one word come out of my mouth that might even mislead somebody. Y'all should see all the emails I get. And I'm like, I don't want that responsibility. I don't. But then again, somebody that's close to me said, Dante, listen. You do know. You heard of the Watchmen, right? If... You see a storm coming. I want y'all to pay attention. If you see a storm coming, Dante, and you know this storm got the potential to wipe out this whole village, and you the watchman, and you don't say nothing, you don't alarm the people to let them know that this storm is coming, and they perish, all that innocent blood is on your hands for not warning the people. But if you go warn the people, and they are saved, or you go warn the people and they don't listen, then all their blood is on their own heads. So now Dante is caught. I'm caught. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that I that I, I do want to talk about. It's a lot of biblical things that I want to talk about. But like I told y'all earlier, this isn't my house. This isn't my house. And when I say this isn't my house, YouTube is not my house. I can't go into the house of YouTube, right? With the all white pretty walls with mud and throwing it 
on all the white walls, right? With this speech, because what's gonna happen is all they gotta do is just press one button, boom, gone. Only God, right? And I'm trying to navigate through this. I'm trying to figure it out. What I can say, what I can't say. They say that we got freedom of speech. No, we don't. We ain't got no freedom of speech. But it is what it is. I'm going to keep making these prison stories for y'all. I'm going to keep making these Atlanta stories for y'all. But every once in a while, every once in a while I'm going to slide in that God talk. I'm going to slide in that, that let y'all know that whether you a drug addict, Dope fiend, alcoholic, prostitute, criminal. You know, Jesus, when he came here 2,000 and some change years ago, he didn't come to the righteous people. He came for us, the dope fiends, the crackheads, the alcoholics, the prostitutes, all of us that's living in darkness. He came to save us. Y'all better wake up. Stop listening to these people that's misleading y'all. Y'all better start li listen. Everybody, back in, back in them days, in the ancient times, when them prophets came around, people hated seeing them prophets. Why? Because they always came with bad news. But the bad news was only a result of the people's behavior, of them sinning, turning their backs on God. This is why they hated the prophets. This is why they killed most of the prophets. Because they hated when, when God sent them to correct them. But here's the thing. There's a lot of people, y'all. And it, it, there's going to become a time, I tell y'all all the time. There's a line that's drawn. And either you're going to be righteous a righteous man, a, right, a righteous woman, or you're going to be a wicked man or a wicked woman. And just because you're wicked today, that don't mean that you can't change, man. I'm telling y'all, I am not the same person that I was some years back. When I go back to my old neighborhood sometimes, and, and I run into old associates, and they be on the same... Like they like time stop on the same mess. Oh, what's up, my N word? Man, where the H is at? First thing they say, man, Dante, where the H is at? Where the holes at? That's the only thing that, that that's the only remembrance you got of me of having the girls, bringing the girls around. That's it. Reminiscing about old stories of breaking into houses, robbing people, all demonic things. I can't go back to the hood. I refuse to go back to the hood. I'm lying. I'm lying. I refuse to go back to the hood and hang out and chill. And talk about what? Demonic, sinful things that I used to be involved in? I'm going to tell y'all something. And I'm not saying this to brag. I'm not saying this to boast. I promise God know my heart when I'm about what I'm about to say. Yesterday, I did go back to the hood. To the hood, hood. It was a dollar store in the hood. I went in there. I went to get me, um, what is that called? Um, what was that called? A root beer and some caramel. Y'all know them Girl Scout cookies? It's coconut and it got caramel and chocolate. I got some of them and I got me a root beer. In front of me, it was, it was a a teenager, maybe he was 16 or 17. And it was two boys that was with him that was maybe 11 and 10. They had a pack of noodles and they had a pack of chips or something like that. Two items. And they paid with it with the bridge card. Now, I'm not going to tell you how much money I had on me. That ain't the whole point. But I'm looking at them and, and I, can, I can clearly see that they living in poverty just like I was. Right? And my heart went out to them. I said, hey, y'all, no disrespect, but go get whatever y'all want to get. 
And they was like, for real? I said, yeah, go, 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 go get, go get whatever y'all want to go get. So they were like, all right, cool. And, and this is what really broke me, y'all. They only came back with one item. One item. One dude came back with a pack of Reese's, Reese's Cups, and another dude came back with some other type of candy. And I know I can't save the world. I know I can't. But um, I just wanted, I just, I, I wanted to, Tell them to just get in the truck, get in my truck with me. We finna go to the grocery store or call your mama and tell her. But I, I know we, we live in some weird, crazy times. And I know it don't sound right. It don't sound right because there's too much craziness that's going on in the world. But I just want to take them to the grocery store. Because cause I know they probably didn't have half much at home. And I was there. I lived like that too. And I, I, I just, and I looked, I, I, that's why I said, when I pay my tithes and offerings, like I said, I don't got nothing against the church. And I'm going to tell y'all, I have nothing against the church. Because I'm going to keep it funky with y'all. Some years back, when I was facing eviction, I did go to the black church. We ain't got nothing for you, homie. It's when I went to a Catholic church. It was called My Lady of Something. They asked me how much I was behind and where to write the check to. This is why, and I don't care what nobody's opinion is about the Catholic church. I give to whoever gives to me. Right? Right? And I'm not saying that as if you, you got to do for me and I do for you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that in that way. But the Catholic Church, they didn't ask, they didn't want me to come back Sunday and stand up in front of congregation and be like, yeah, yeah, we blessed him. No, nah, they wrote the check out to the co uh, apartment complex. And there it go. So I pay my tithes and offers, yes. And I have not. I, I keep it funky with y'all. I haven't donated to the Catholic Church yet, but I am. When I start making the money that I need to be making, oh, I'm tithing and my offerings going to the Catholic Church. And my tithing and offering is when I go back to the hood and see kids that's living in poverty. Go to the store, get a couple of pairs of shoes of different sizes. Go buy a whole gang of clothes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And just mob the neighborhood and see kids and give them this stuff. See a family, a mama at the bus stop. And none of this is bragging and none of this boasting. But I got a couple of dollars that I can go get a car for maybe fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars. See a mama at the bus stop with her kids. Here you go. Here's the title. Here's the keys. That's what I'm saying. We supposed to help each other out here in this world. It's, the world is already chaotic. And crazy, but there's still good people out here in this world, y'all. It, it is. It is. And I'm gonna tell y'all something else because I, I get a lot of racist people. Ra somebody says something so cruel, something so cruel. And when I say racist people, I'm not talking about white people. This black girl, and I don't know if she in the comment section or not. I I don't know if she in the comment section or not. But she said something that was so vile. She said something so vile. And I'm I, I I'm not gonna say her name. I'm not even gonna put her out there. But I make 
on my YouTube videos now because I got a lot of Latinos that speak Spanish <clears throat> and they ask me, can I recreate my videos and have it speaking in Spanish? Y'all seen some of them videos. Somebody said, I hate Mexicans. I hate Spanish like I hate Mexicans or something. I don't know was that a was that a joke, but some if it was a joke, I'm gonna just tell y'all. I that's one thing I don't play with. I don't play with vi talking about violating kids or women or men. And uh, and y'all can call me what y'all want. Y'all can call me the N word. Y'all can call me whatever. I got thick skin. This is how I'm able to do this. I don't, I, that don't really, people talk about me all the time. That don't really bother me like that, okay? But one thing I don't do is, is the race, the, the race talk. And it was a black girl that did this, that, that it, it just, I'm like, yo, you, come on, man. That ain't right. Why would you say that? But it is what it is, man. Um, let me give y'all some quick updates right quick, all right? So, on the Dante show, matter of fact, let me show y'all. Let me show y'all right quick. I got y'all. Hold on, y'all. I got y'all. Let me turn this down right here. All right. So, for the people that need to see this and understand this all right hold on i need i'm gonna show y'all something all right let me show y'all something i got two channels i'm just gonna say two because i'm getting rid of another channel the Dante Show Network. <clears throat> I need to make this clear to the people. The Dante Show is a network. Meaning, it's just not prison stories that's on here. Alright? You got where... Here's the Spanish section right here, okay? That is in total Spanish, right here. Okay? Then now you got my Atlanta stories right here, y'all. It's my Atlanta stories. It's a part of the network. These are the prison stories. Well, I got to change that for some. I was messing with something, messing with the algorithm and put scary stories. But this is the prison stories right here. If you miss any of my lives, you can go right here to this section and watch the lives, okay? Here go my skits right here. Of me acting. Okay. Here's the prison compilation stories. Where I got season one, two, and three. Of all my prison stories. This is for the people that like to take long walks in the park. Or you're a truck driver. Or it'll get you through your work shift. This is all the prison stories. Right here. The compilation. Right here is the prison story classic with music. This is the one that got the music on it. Okay, I only got one music, um, one video video on here with the music, and that's the Muslim guy his revenge. Okay, so now when y'all see me upload a video, right? When y'all see me upload a video, an old video, like the the um, Beyonce video, you see I dropped the Spanish version, and I dropped the English version, right? And and then I dropped, you know, part one. Part two, Spanish version, English version. Spanish version, English version. Now, right here is the two new stories. I got two new stories. The, the Lisa Atlanta story. I see only 641 people when he watched that video. And it's been out for three hours, y'all. Got to do better. And I got another Atlanta story called Man Down Atlanta story. Okay? That's that right there. Now, people say... Well, Dante, what about the podcast? I'm glad y'all asked. Now, again, y'all get that. Type one in the comment section if y'all understand 
that the Dante Show Network has different content that I do. Okay? Type one in the comment section. Now, when we go over here to the Nobody's Podcast, right? The Dante Show Network got 45,300 subscribers. The Dante, the Nobody's Podcast got 47,600 subscribers. This is that page right here, the Nobody's Network, okay? Now, with the Nobody's Network, we got prison stories. These are all the prison stories. Right now, we got what? Uh, 4, 8, 10, 10 videos on there. These are only going to be prison stories okay you got one video that got 87,000 views 80 80,000 views 1 million 700 views 154 and so on these are going to be all and only prison stories you will not see no other cop it won't be no Atlanta stories it won't be no skits it won't be nothing only but um prison stories here why? Because YouTube is a business, okay? YouTube is a business, and I am here to make money, all right? I'm here to save souls, spread awareness, and make money, okay? I'm here to make money, too. So while, while I'm doing that, if y'all see any re-uploads, it's not y'all always getting a new video. So y'all stop playing these military mind games. Y'all know I'm gonna drop y'all a new video, dang it. If not every day, every other day. But um, when y'all see me re-upload a video, it's the reason why I'm doing that. Okay. Um, for the people that just like to hear the audibles, I'm going to death. I'm not doing no audibles right here on the Dante Show Network. It's just going to be what this is. But if you want to hear, um, but that's, that's what it is, a podcast over there. Um, It was something else I had to tell y'all. Hold on one second. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. That's what it was. Hold on, y'all. That's what it was. So... For the people that is wondering, where is Tommy? Tommy is on vacation. He'll be back soon, y'all. But, yo, there go the cash app right there. I know some people was asking for me to put the cash app up. It's right there. I pinned it at the top, y'all. It's right there. All right, I'm going to put it up one more time for the people. So there go right there. Uh, uh, yeah, and that's with three W's. So, um, yeah. There you go. And that's the cash app right there. Speaking of cash app, um, let me shout y'all out right quick because... Without y'all, it would not be no me. And let me tell you something. Somebody wrote me and said, all I can give is a dollar, right? I said, your dollar is no different from the person that, that sent me $300 before. Somebody sent me $500 before. Your dollar is no different than that $500 that was sent. And I'm going to tell you why. If you take the time out to give Dante even a dollar out of what you made in this world, I'm is highly appreciated of it. Okay? I'm highly appreciated of it because you took the time out of your life, right? And decided to say, you know what? Let me hit him off with a dollar. This all I got. If that's all you got, number one, don't send it, all right? I would ne let, let's get that clear first. Don't ever send me nothing if it's going to put you in a predicament, okay? Don't ever do that, okay? Don't ever do that. Make sure you good first, okay? Make sure 
you straight. Make sure y'all good, okay? But if if you feel like, hey, I want to hit Dante off with something, then it's all good. Oh, just like right now, Cynthia Ford. I appreciate that. I just, I just seen that, Cynthia. Where you at? There she go. Cynthia Ford, thank you for that. Oh, yeah, thank you for that, Cynthia Ford. Hey, I, I got to say it one more time, y'all. Hey, matter of fact, let me say something, y'all. I need for y'all to type one in the comment section for Cynthia Ford. She done said me something for my birthday. I need for y'all to type one in the comment section for Cynthia Ford. Hey, y'all, stop playing military mind games and type one in the comments section for Cynthia Ford. She ain't playing no games. Who else up in here? DJ Ice Cold. Lisa D. Antonio, my man Isaiah Blake, Allison Bello, Gary Florin, Eva, Lisa. Who else in here? Who else was up here? Kevin, Abraham, Beverly, Rudy, Rudy Allen, Curtis Cooper. Thank y'all for the cash app. Oh, y'all, we got a new member. We got a new member in the building, y'all. Keon Parks just became a lockdown warrior. I need for y'all to type four in the comment section for Keon Parks, y'all. Let's go. Type four in the comment section. Come on, y'all. Welcome Keon Parks. Type four in the comment section, y'all. We got a new lockdown warrior. He just became a member, y'all. Stop playing military mind games, and let's see them forwards light up in the comment section. Come on, y'all. Let's do it. That's how, that's how it is. Matter of fact, um, and listen, shout, shout out to everybody that hit the like button, okay? Shout out to everybody that been watching the videos. There's something else that I'm going to need for y'all to do, too. Because sometimes y'all get a little bit hard-headed. Some of y'all is hard-headed. Let me tell Let me tell y'all something right quick. I need, because I got I to gotta get ready to roll. But listen, I need everybody, as soon as it's live in, go watch this video. It's called Lisa, Atlanta Story. It's the last one that's uploaded. When you go there, I need for y'all to type, um... Hello, Dante, or what's up, Dante? So I know that y'all in the building. I'm, I'm trying to figure something out. So y'all make sure y'all go check that video out called Lisa Atlanta Story right here on the Dante Show Network. It's the last video. I need for y'all to hit that like button when you get in there and type what's up, Dante. Something, let me know that y'all was at, in this live because I'm trying to see something. All right? I need for y'all to hold me down on that right quick. So, Lisa, Elena, story, I need for y'all to check that out, all right? Um, Cynthia, but you got to go there. Uh-uh, uh-uh, Cynthia, don't, don't, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing about it. Hold on, let me get this off. But, yeah, y'all do me a favor. Go over there and write something in the um, comment section letting me know that y'all over there, that y'all came over there, all right? Baron, let me go ahead and shout y'all out. Let me know where y'all from. Let me know where y'all from so I can shout y'all out. And then we about to roll out. It's roll call time, y'all. And then as soon as we roll out, I need for y'all to go over there and check that story out. Let's go. Where y'all from so I can shout y'all out. All right, we got my, we got the beautiful Miss Cynthia Ford from Alabama, y'all. We got Keon Parks. That's a new lockdown warrior, y'all, from North Carolina. Who else up in here, y'all? We got the, the double, the double name gang, y'all, from North Carolina, Charlotte, y'all. Baron Evans, y'all, from Westland, Michigan. Um, Black male from Flat Bush, Brooklyn. We got Jim Bellamy, y'all, from from Harlem, New York, y'all. Antoine Day, y'all, from that good Troy, Michigan. Sun drop from that great 614, Columbus, Ohio. We got R. Allen, y'all, from Little Rock, Arkansas, in the building. My girl, Restless No More. She ain't Restless No More, y'all. From Queens, New York. Queens in the building, y'all. Donald Burton, y'all, from that great Pontiac, Michigan. 
um, Rose Maples. Man, you came in here late, bros. Drizzy the one from that Brooklyn. Two times. Brooklyn. Who else we got over here? We got my girl, Beverly Johnson. Y'all from that New Jersey in a building. We got Calo. I, I finna mess your name up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said your name earlier, but I know I'm about to mess it up. Y'all know I can't read. I'm tongue tied. But Cali, is it Cali Girl 98? Is it Cali Girl from 98? Is it Cali Girl 98? If so, shout out to Cali Girl 98 from San Diego. But y'all, she in Chicago. That's her new home. Larry Martin, what's going on from Aurora, Illinois? Jonna, Johnny, is it Jonna Kendall? I don't want to mess your name up. Is it Jonna or Jonah? Johnny? Johnny Kendall, anyway, from Metropolis, Illinois. I know I messed that up. Metropolis, Illinois? All right. Seth, oh, come on, man. What is this? I, I'll be messing up names, man. It does say Sunita Stories or Sinetta Stories. This is Elijah. Shout out to you. Dante, I'm from Georgia, Columbus. All right. Oh, shout out to you. Um, uh, is it Santa? Hey, hold on. Santa Stories. Do you got a Do you got a YouTube channel? Let me know if you got a YouTube channel. But shout out to you. WW Virginia, what's happening? Keon Parks, what's up? Mel D. Main from that Memphis Tina Key in the building. Rose Maple, y'all from Indianapolis. Indiana. Um, who else up in here? My man from the 313 Recovery Miss. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. 313 Recovery Miss Wendy. There's another person here that got the 313 from Detroit, so I apologize. Okay. There's another person here that got Dane there, the similar name that you got on here. And there's uh, Mickey Scorpio, so I'm sorry. Because he hit, it looked just like that. I was on the road. But 313 Recovery, Miss Wendy, y'all, is from Detroit. That great 313. Um, Ro, who else is here? Ben Remy, y'all, from the Bronx. But they in Texas. So, with that, y'all, ask Jesus to forgive y'all for all y'all sins. Because we are sinful creatures. And I don't want none of us to perish if we don't get to see tomorrow. So ask Jesus to forgive y'all for your sins. And if we don't make it till tomorrow, I'll see y'all in paradise. With that, 